Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and a few days ago I finished reading The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky, translated by Michael Katz, and I got an advanced reader copy from a generous benefactor. Um, I absolutely love the Karamazov brothers. It's one of my favorite books. My old friend Bob recommended it to me when I was in my early 20s, and now I've read it six or seven times, uh, different translations. The first was the Penguin, uh, Black Spine uh, Penguin paperback translation by Macduff. I've gone on to read the P. Bruton Volokonsky translation, which I believe until this one was the most recent, the Constant Garnet translation, one of the older, oldest. Um, my particular favorite is the Ignat Avesy translation, which you can find in the Oxford uh, Classics lineup. The reason uh, Ignat Avesy's translation is so dear to me is that I think it was the third time I had read the book, and it was the time where uh, his, his translation unlocked the book for me. There, there were no more unnecessary challenges, things that I had a really hard time getting over. Instead, um, I was pulled into the story and enjoyed it and found so much in it and found so much to return to. So, sentimentally, um, I have a really soft spot for the Ignat AZ translation. Finishing the Michael Katz translation, I have to say it was spectacular, and um, I would probably say that if the Ignat Avesy translation was the one that unlocked it for me, um, this, the Michael Katz translation, is going to be the, the one that I would recommend as the most approachable uh, translation for a modern-day reader. It's um, very clear. It's easy to read and follow along. There's a, a directness um, to it. You don't have um, the peculiarities that you get from the passage of time that you might find in the Constant Garnet translation. Um, it reads very modern. Now, this is not a very easy book to recommend as a cold recommendation. I'm not going to talk about the specifics of the book, the, the plot points, uh, all the way through. I've actually made a whole video series um, going through quite in depth uh, the entirety of the book, but I would like to do sort of a um, wide-angle view, uh, talk about the book in a wide-angle, um, and if the best that I can, if possible, um, talk about the Michael Katz translation. Um, one of the things that I noticed immediately was the amount of personalities in this book. Now, um, we have this setup where basically uh, it's just this very unfortunate family, this um, uh, scoundrel, uh, the, the patriarch of the family, Fyodor, who's this awful, awful person, and then all of his children that he's had with two different wives, um, the elders, Dimitri, the middle son is Ivan, and the younger, youngest son is Alyosha. And importantly, we learn about uh, this family and the, the three brothers, we learn about their childhood uh, before we get into them as young adults and the, the meat of the action. Uh, more and more, it's become apparent that um, their childhood is extremely important, uh, and everybody's childhood is, is extremely important in um, just who you become, what, what is your nature. 
And each one of these sons uh, have very different characteristics. Dimitri is uh, emotional and uh, hot-headed. The father is a sensualist and debaucherous. Uh, the middle son, Ivan, is cold and intellectual and um, ter terrifically described as silent as a grave. Uh, a self-purported atheist has thoughts like uh, everything is permitted. And then we have Alyosha, the, the younger son, the youngest brother, um, who we, we follow along for most of the book and he is um, religious, uh, spiritual, kind of a good heart, an innocent soul. Um, I had a joke while I was reading this book where I would pick it up or wherever I was, open up the bookmark and kind of laughing to myself, I would say, oh, this is the part in the book where Alyosha walks across town to have an insane conversation. Um, and it's going to be the, the dynamic of this family and um, the general attitude that the town has for the goings-on and all, all the consequences that start spilling out uh, from, from this family. And the central um, climactic moment as far as story beats is going to be the murder. The father is murdered. And so for all the things that are going on, we have this essentially a murder mystery um, because there's quite a while where nobody knows who the murderer was. The reader isn't entirely sure. What's interesting about this book is it's about 200 pages of introduction bef before we start getting into the, into, into the meat of the story. And the way that I think about it is that Dostoevsky is saying, and it's, it's like a 900 page book, this edition anyway, it's almost as if Dostoevsky is saying, I, I have this amazing story. It's a great story. But before I can tell you, I have to catch you up. You have to know not only about these people, but about their lives and how they were brought up and uh, deep-seated um, grudges and the, the, the suffering and torments that uh, have, have affl afflicted these people. Uh, and you need to understand the motivations of what's going on, the, the family dynamics, and the, the relationships between the family and other members, servants in the household, and um, neighbors, and other, other people in the book, before we can start getting into what I even want to tell you. And that's an ask. That's a tall order to get about 200 pages into a book, which uh, is about the length of maybe a short novel, where, where, where you get everything. But it's worth it. I would say, um, by the time you get to um, Ivan's uh, first great appearance, now Ivan is lar is largely a background character throughout the book. He's always he'll he'll maybe be in a corner silently um, at his father's side. Alyosha, who we spend a lot of time with, is always kind of just missing him. Uh, Ivan's ignoring him. But Ivan has these two showstoppers in the book. And the, the first is in the middle of the book, where we get uh, the, the chapters Rebellion and the Grand Inquisitor. And then later on, which I, I, if I can, I'll get to. And... This interaction of Ivan walking down the street, he's running all over town. This poor Alyosha <laughs> gets this bigger bit. Uh, and Ivan calls him up to this restaurant. They have this conversation, and it's about um, God 
and life and um, religion and um, good and evil. And Ivan tells uh, the rebellion chapter is just brutal. <clears throat> following right into follows right into the Grand Inquisitor, which is a, a famous landmark chapter, brilliantly told in, in this translation. At that point, the book accelerates. For me, every hundred pages I read after that, I read faster. And we, we essentially what happens is there will be a tonal shift. We finally go into Dimitri's story where there's two women involved. There's the 3,000 rubles. Um, he, he believes that his father owes him money. Um, and then there's uh, Grishenka and Katerina and uh, a very complicated uh, uh, love triangle of sorts. We have the father and the son both trying to court the same woman. We have Dmitri and Ivan potentially in love with the, uh, another woman. And it's all worth it. I have all these threads start coming coming together. But we run around with Dimitri in his desperation to get this, to get these 3,000 rubles. And um, what, what, what Michael Katz does so well is he brings so much personality and life and distinctiveness to each one of these characters. Um, the you can really tell that Ivan um, thinks and speaks very differently than Dimitri. They all have their own way of speaking, which feels um, natural. It's not as if this isn't a Dickensian character where there's all of the flourishing cliques and eccentricities peppered in and it's not just the main characters that all um, have their own way of speaking which is apparent in the book when, when you don't need at, at a certain point you don't even need to know who who is speaking you can read it and know th this is Alyosha this is Alyosha speaking um, it's all the background characters too uh, characters that can never really get to the point they're always beating around the bush the way that they're speaking. Extremely minor characters, like one of my favorite characters this time around was uh, Dr. Herzenstube, the, uh, the local country bumpkin doctor. Doctor, Because uh, there, there's just suffering and illness and injury, uh, misery throughout this book. And... Dr. Her Herzenstub is making his uh, rounds, and his, his appearance is an extremely background character. Um, until the end, he has a little moment where he gets to speak, and we find that he has a German uh, uh, manner, a German uh, diction. Um, he'll pause to try to find just, just the right word, and um, th there's an incident that brings in a big big, uh, Im important, uh, famous doctor from Moscow who comes into town and is now going around checking on these different patients, and he's mocking Dr. Herzenstube. Um, and so we just get this little moment of um, this minor background character who, by the time he makes his appearance, you've had these little, little details throughout the book that in a paragraph or half of a page, um, you have this believable character that you know, and you feel like you know a portion of their life, and you know all of the actions of these Karamazovs have affected him in his way. Uh, the voices are uh, extremely important in this book. The other thing 
which I noticed, I, I've noticed before, but I was thinking about it much more this go around, is the narrative voice. Who is telling this story? And it changes. Initially, it seemed we, we have the narrator uh, using we. Uh, and you get the sense that it's sort of like the town. It's the whole town telling a story of this family. Other times, it seems like, well, maybe it's the town gossip. It's someone that has collected all of this information and is now, um, in a single voice, retelling us. There's other times where it very much is the, the writer speaking to the reader. And then we have these action sequences where um, the, 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 any sort of singular narr narrator goes away and that we're just getting action set pieces. We have a narrator that can um, plumb the depths of a character's soul and know their innermost um, thoughts and fears penetrate their heart and their mind. Towards the end of the book, we have a narrator who's not really sure that he's able to tell the story uh, as accurately as he can. There's a trial and he many times admits that he doesn't know the legal language very much. And it's this multifaceted, uh, these multifaceted narrative devices that all work together so well to piece um, as if we're just going around in a panoramic uh, sort of camera, catching all of these angles from all of these viewpoints to have everything come together. Uh, a specific uh, aspect of this book in particular and I don't know if it's going to uh, be in the final um, production. I hope that it is. And it's gonna be the use of footnotes and uh, in particular, um, the decision of which footnotes um, um, are warranted. And one of the difficulties that I had with this book um, 20 years ago when I first read it was um, the way that Russian characters are named, depending, I think it's called um, the patronomics, I think, um, they'll have different names depending on who is addressing who. And so family members might use one name where a servant talking to somebody uh, would use a different name. And um, I remember reading reading this book at some point and thinking like if they're translating this thing why don't they wipe all of that out and just say this is Ivan just call him Ivan the whole time naively and the challenge is that um, we have all of these characters that have all sorts of different names uh, Dimitri can also be Mitya uh, Ivan can be Vanka Alyosha can be Alexei um, and on and on and on Every character has multiple names. And it finally dawned on me how important um, the, these name variations are. The, the reason I bring up this particular edition is that the footnotes, when a different name is used, the footnote will say, um, Mitya is a diminutive, affectionate diminutive of Dimitri. And just very quickly, you learn, okay, th this is the same character. When someone named Vanka shows up, it's, it's Ivan. What I now realize is through these different names, the relate, the re it signifies the, the, the change in um, either the tone of conversation or long-term relationships, um, growth or destruction between characters, whether they are being affectionate or arguing. And um, it really is Im important in understanding uh, the dynamics of um, 
whatever interactions are going on. If that if if that makes sense. Um, what else do I want to say? Alyosha, um, this time around, um, for all of the brothers, this family are sort of this n n notorious family. Everybody in town knows the Karamazovs. And you'll often hear when people talk about this book, uh, which brother did you identify with? Which, which brother uh, did you relate to? Or which brother do you like the most? Uh, nobody ever says Smirnikov, but uh, I have gone around with all of these characters. Um, Ivan comes off as just such a cool character that the back half of the book where he's like the shark fin just circling and looming and then we finally get the the Smirnikov, um interrogations and finally uh, Ivan's nightmare and the devil uh, truly astounding uh, chapters um, I think Dimitri is the most fun that, that section where he's running around town desperate to get his 3,000 rubles. It's so engaging. The book just flies. Alyosha, who's uh, he's a novice, he was part of a monastery. I didn't even mention Father Zosima um, and the whole monastery uh, portion of the book or all of the children throughout the book. All of these stories play a part you have the life of Father Zosima, the elder monk, uh, directly after the Grand Inquisitor chapter, serving as a counterbalance to the argument of the Grand Inquisitor. Um, these children uh, is suffering miserable, uh, sick, and ailing, um, injured children that we meet throughout this book that Alyosha takes so much time and care um, to spend with them. Um, the corollary that I make is um, through the mind of Alyosha um, that essentially we're all children. Um, the adults are just these grown-up children. Not in a patronizing way, but when, when you think about how you should, in general, the best version of yourself, how should you be uh, treating each other um, with the kindness and softness um, and honesty that you should uh, when, you, when you're speaking to a child. And the, 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 just the, the, not knowing what someone has gone through in their lives, recognizing that everybody has grown up, um, everybody has suffered uh, misfortunes and recognizing that when you're uh, addressing anybody um, I found to be very powerful. There was a moment where Alyosha uh, makes a point, um, one of the insane conversations that he's having to say, um, be kind and then be honest, but in that order thought that was very instructive. Um, the book is a masterpiece and this translation is masterfully done. Um, of all the translations that I've read, uh, right now this is the one that I would easy, most easily um, recommend if you're interested um, in getting into the Brothers Karamazov. Um, I'm very much, um, I couldn't be happier that I've read it and, uh, being able to read it in advance, um, to have an opportunity to talk about it and maybe, um, persuade you to pick it up again or pick it up for the first time. So let me know if you've read it. Let me know if you're going to be reading the, uh, Michael Katz translation. If you read it, let me know as well. So thank you so much uh, for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like. And thank you and take care.